Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Shapiro Feature Walkthroughs. I'm joined today, as usual, by Yosef, our Shapiro PP of product. How are you today, Yosef? Good, Dan. How are you doing? Pretty good. So today, Yosef will walk us through an amazing Shapiro feature called... Kits. Kits. Exactly. One of the best. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So please, please uh, enlighten us on Kits, Yosef. Sure. So kits, uh, sometimes referred to as bundles or sets, um, are basically a way to uh, group products uh, together so that they may be ordered as one product, but when it goes to ship, there might be multiple products that are shipped. So a common example would be um, like a two pack of a product. So maybe you're selling a product that comes with a two pack or maybe like a variety pack. Um, and you know, on your website, you want to show it as one product. But when it comes to shipping it, you want to ship two products or three products or whatever the, the components of that kit are. Uh, so Shipyard right. makes it really easy to create that and manage that. So um, in Shipyard, you can create a product um, and then define what the components of that product are. And as you'll see, the components could be multiple quantity of one product, several different products, or a combination of the two. Um, so I have some examples. Um, we can pull up my screen and show you what that looks like. Um, as you can see here, we have a product. It's a 10-pack of Oreo cookies. Now, I wanted to show this product to point out one thing, and that is, in this case, as you can see, this is a 10-pack of the Stay Fresh packs of Oreos. Um, this would not be a kit. So and the reason it's not a kit is because right. it's one unit, right? So you go to the store or you go to ship it. You're just picking up that box. It may have 10 individual units in there, but those individual units are never sold separately. So this, you know, while it may sound like a kit, it's a 10 pack. We would not define that as a kit. It's just a regular product, you know, that gets shipped. Uh, mm -hmm. What we might have as a kit, and what you can see if you scroll down here, you can see I've defined as a kit, um, is a two pack of this, this 10 pack. So, you know, maybe you're selling, um, you know, two of these, maybe it's a discount or something. Uh, and this allows you in Ship Hero to say this product, and if we view it, we can see the actual product that I've defined. So I've defined this product as a two pack of this. Um, and, you know, the picture you can see, I chose two of them. Again, this is all done for the, the front end um, website, however you sell it. Um, but when a picker goes to pick this product, they're going to be told to pick two of that individual component. And defining that is very easy. I just come down to my component section and I add that product, um, just search for the product. So if I just search for Oreos, choose the product, it adds it as a component. And then if I go to quick edit, scroll down here and update my kit quantity too. And that basically tells Shapiro that when the order comes in for this product, what I really want to do is ship two of this individual component. So the picker doesn't need to know that it was sold as a kit. They don't really care. They're just told grab two of this individual product. Uh, another thing Ship Hero does is keep track of how many you have available. So you can see that we show here, uh, I have a hundred of this individual product on hand. Uh, two have been allocated. And then if you go over here, you see the on, the on hand of the kit is 49. And the reason it's 49 is that I only have 98 of these individual products available. I need two for each kit. So only 90, only 49 are available. And that's, that's automatically right. kept you know, tracked. So we'll tell the, the sales channel, let's say Shopify, whatever sales channel you have, that you have 49 available. Now, if I sell one of these individual ones, that's going to automatically go down to 48. So we'll only allow um, how many of those kits you can, you can make. We'll only allow that as available. And that's automatically tracked in the on hand of the kit. So you'll never see a kit with allocated or a kit with, with a back order. That's all managed and tracked on the component level. And the on hand of the kit is automatically calculated and updated by Shapiro. So that's one type of kit. Another one might be a situation where I have three different components in the kit. So here I have a chip sampler. So if you see, I have one Fritos, a Doritos, and a Lay's. If I go down to my components, you'll see I have each one of those defined as a component of the kit. Now, in this case, the quantity is one. It could be different. It doesn't have to be one. You know, again, it could be a combination of different quantities and different products. And you'll see we also keep track of how many are available of this kit. As I mentioned before, in this case, there's one. 
And if you look at why, you know, I have seven on hand of this, six on hand of this, and two on hand of that, but there's some allocated as well. So in this case, this bottom product, the delays, I have two on hand, but one's allocated to an existing order. That means you only have, only have one lays available to the ship. So the availability of the kit is just one. So again, that's tracked automatically and calculated automatically by ship here. Another thing to know about kits is the type of kit it is. So in ship here, there's two different types of kits that we have. There's the standard kit, which I've been showing you, and what we call a build kit. And a build kit, you can see here I have my chocolate sampler. Um, it looks very similar to a kit, to any other kit, but you'll see this is defined as a build kit. And then I can easily change just by going to the product details and checking or unchecking this box. And the difference for that is at what point do we split up the kit when the order comes in? So for a standard kit, when an order comes in, the components are not changed or the, the order line items are not changed um, until the order is actually being picked. So if you go into the order and you can see I have an example order here, this is my chip sampler. So you can see what the components are. So each one of these products is a component as we saw before. And this is how the product, the order looks throughout the entire order life cycle. When the picker goes to pick the order, they'll see the individual components. For a build kit, my chocolate sampler build kit, um, you can see that the actual components are split up and added as separate line items on the order. So you can see the actual chocolate sampler product has the status of broken sets and the individual products were added to the order. Now the functional difference is twofold. First of all, if I change a kit component, if it's a build kit, any existing order will not be affected. So if I go into my chocolate sampler and change this, you know, Hershey's milk chocolate bar to some other, other chocolate bar, this order will not be affected because the order has already been split up and the items have already been added to the order. In this case, if I go to my chip sampler and change out one of those components, this order would be changed. Um, and that's because it has not been split yet. So as long as I haven't started picking this order, I haven't shipped it, obviously, um, what the picker is going to see will be changed by the change to the component. Again, as long as it's not a build kit. Uh, another use case would be if I need to split the order. So if I want to partially ship an order or if I'm you know, shipping from different warehouses, it needs to be a build kit. So because these are split up and they're separate products on the order, I can now split that. So if I was, again, shipping from different warehouses or partially shipping an order, I can now do that because these are separate products on the order. For a standard kit, I can't do that. So if one of these items is not available, I can't ship the order. I cannot partially ship a kit uh, because it's still kind of as one, one product. Um, right. If I want to split warehouses, again, I can't do that for a regular kit. So mm -hmm. it'll need to be a built kit. Uh, most use cases we see, the regular standard kit is fine, but keep that in mind for those use cases that I just mentioned where a built kit may make more sense. Um, now, changing a kit between a built kit and a, and a standard kit, that really should not be done um, unless there's no order they need to ship uh, because the difference in when the, the product gets split up, you know, when those, those items get added to the order, um, we don't recommend making those any changes while there's existing orders for that product. So if you do need to change it, just make sure any existing orders are, you know, are shipped, then you can change it, and then any future order will, will use the new type. Um, Again, keep in mind that any changes to um, inventory on any component will affect any kit. And of course, you can have one product, one component in multiple kits. And if I sell one kit, that'll affect the inventory of, of all the kits. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that kits are not warehouse specific. So if I define a kit, that's going to be the same definition for all warehouses. So if you have products in multiple warehouses, those kits are going to be the same in all warehouses. Uh, and that's it. That's, um, you know, again, kits are very uh, useful and pretty, very powerful, um, you know, feature. Uh, and again, it's something where it allows you to do all that definition and creating those components and deciding what's in a kit in Ship Hero on your sales platform. It's just a regular product. You don't need any, any uh, you know, apps or any special uh, programs on the, the sales platform, whether it's Shopify or Amazon or whatever sales platform it is. It's just a regular product. And all the, the kit definition is done in Ship Hero. You know, again, we keep track of the inventory and make sure that that inventory is always up to date. And, set. and that's it. Awesome. Yeah, it, it's a really simple, but yet uh, 
a useful and flexible uh, feature, yep. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And we have some customers that use it in, you know, hundreds or even thousands of products. Um, they're selling different, different bundles, different, you know, different packs. And um, so it does, does become very useful. Great. Thank you very much, Yosef, for that explanation. My pleasure. And if you'd like to check out other feature walkthroughs, click on the top right corner. And if you're ready to unlock your e-commerce fulfillment superpowers, visit shapiro.com to schedule a call with us. <laughs> Thank you for watching and have a great day.